Hello YouTube, it's been over a year since I've published my last video and it's been almost two years since I started this series called Mystery Film. Uh, I've been promising a part three where we get to meet the author of those photographs and basically get some more in-depth information on that mysterious story about those negatives. So this past summer I met up with Tony Talent who was, ends up, the photographer and so in this video you're going to get to meet Tony we're going to talk a little bit about how those negatives ended up being undeveloped and coming into my possessions and then in another part we're going to talk about his grandmother Carrie Wiggins who was an amazing woman and so her story is worth knowing so enjoy uh, I'm sorry for the delay I hope it was worth the wait Is this the room you filmed um, some of the pieces on YouTube? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, actually, this is the um, dark box that I used, and uh, I was probably set up right here. Um, I told a story on YouTube, and I'm, I'm just I'll just tell it again, and that is basically um, the retiring art teacher was cleaning out her closet, and she had stuff from the previous art teacher, which was Mr. Forrester, and she basically was going to chuck it. And so she calls me up and asks if I wanted to go through the items, and I did. And pretty much most of what's on this shelf and on these shelves are what I found, including um, a whole bunch of empty film canisters that, and along with uh, bulk loaders. Yeah. You might recognize some. I of do those. remember this. Here's several. I mean, there were several, yeah. several of these bulk loaders. Um, as well they, they have film in them and um, some of them have actually filmed from then that we have shot mm -hmm. um, Taylor and I have filmed uh, have, have used uh, some of the old cameras here's one you might recognize yeah that's that's if not it it's it's a replica for sure yeah those are so though there were two or three of those in that little cast trove of what what she had and uh, I basically took the best lenses and the best bodies and kind of mated them together so they're um, and you can tell they've been abused they've got you know they've been dropped and but, oh, yeah. but they're functioning uh, we've we've taken some photographs with them using the old film mm -hmm. and the old developer and I mean basically all the old stuff and we we uh, we, we shot some film with it and that's what I developed your pictures with is this uh, d76 um, that was from that same era. Gosh, I've handled this a lot over the years. Yeah, pop, there we go. Pop, trying to remember. Pull that straight up. Yeah, Muscle there memories. Go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I carried this thing everywhere. Don allowed me to like do some lots of extracurricular stuff. Right. I kind of just kept it. We did a uh, stints with photography uh, during art. But um, it was really kind of um, organic, his art classes were. And so when you found what, what, what you're really awesome mm -hmm. at, he encouraged you to do that. Okay. So I came, came in and out of it a lot. And then I just kept, the, kept this even well, probably for the last two years of high school at least, and then afterward as well. Right, yeah. yeah I later yeah. gave it back to him, you know, at, long after I probably was graduated from college. Wow, yeah. yeah. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, you two are still in contact. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. We never lost contact. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. He's an awesome fellow. Didn't know how really inspirational he was until after after I get back out into a different world and mm. look back on so much that he said to me and all those subtleties that, wow, that kind of rang true and sort of stick with you to this day. Oh, neat. Yeah. It's, it's, it's important everybody can find that mentor Definitely. Who, can, who can help guide them. Yeah, and you don't know it when you're in the middle of it, and you're yeah. what 16, 17 years old. Right. And you don't, this is you know you don't have words for it. At least I didn't at the time. You know, uh, being a kid in the mountains of North Carolina, you just didn't have that kind of language. At least right. from my place in the cove. So let's speculate a little bit on how those images ended up in some kind of a discard pile. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, so what was the what was the routine? First question, 
Do you think those were taken while you were still at school or were those taken after you had already gone and you were coming back to develop? Those I can tell you were taken when I was still in high you school still because school. and the, the kind of the uh, skeleton key to that is because the images from that Savannah visit are also in there. Right. Um, and I took a visit to um, Jacksonville, Florida, and then to Savannah because I got a scholarship to the Savannah School of Art and Design. Right. And I happened to know a couple that owned a bed and breakfast here, and I worked on weekends for them. And they said, why don't you come with us, and we'll drop you off and let you take a look. So I got a partial scholarship. Um, being as life it was, I couldn't afford to go there, but I got to visit. Right. And so while there, I took that camera, that old Pentax, with me, and I just snapped away. And it was that same time. So that was okay. toward the end, the middle, or to an, an end of my senior year. But some okay. of those photographs of my grandmother were taken the winter before. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, there's a picture, I believe, of your father. Mm -hmm. And there's the the dog, the the the, the blur actually. Yeah. But there's the dog, um, some cats or a cat. I can't yes. remember. But some cats, um, and then kind of an artistic picture. Some chairs leaned up against the hillside, and so you're thinking that you took those while you're still in high school. Yes. Okay. Those were. And so when I came back, I actually came back because Don and I kept our relationship up, and he allowed me to keep the Pentax. I continued to take photographs on my own. Right. And actually uh, enrolled in college in a, a photog full-time photography class with a really awesome instructor and kind of edged up my learning. Mm -hmm. that he would allow me to come back and still use the darkroom. Right. Okay. Yeah. What was the procedure? Because I'm sure in an institution like a high school where you've got multiple people coming and using, like in college especially, you've got to have routines. You've got to have routines so that you don't accidentally expose somebody else's film and you don't accidentally, you know, um, make mistakes mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, any exposure to light, the film's ruined. What type of a routine did Mr. Forrester have for like, okay, you've used your film, like I have a box here that says empty cans, you know, this is where the empty cans go. Right. And so you know that this is a, doesn't have loaded film. You know, don't remember a lot of the system. What I know about Don in that time is if he realized that you had a passion for something, the system sort of did kind of dissolved and you got to sort of do your thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there was a system in place, you know, you would do it at a certain period. Sometimes we'd, you'd have two periods of art mm -hmm. if you were really into it, especially as you got into the senior, your senior year. Right. And so we were just trying a little bit of everything. But he kind of made it work. I don't remember ever having to like mark how many canisters or how much film I had used. Right. He really was generous that way, especially if he knew it's something that you loved. You right, right. To. So I'm guessing you probably were carrying multiple rolls of film on you at all times. Oh, yeah. And so you probably had to keep track of what was exposed and what wasn't. You probably knew it was exposed because the leader was inside the can or... or, or I'm just yeah. speculating. Yeah, so one of the things, you know, I think I shared this with you probably a couple of times is what's a mystery to uh, in this mystery to me is that they ever got like, left behind because I was a really tidy student who kept, kept his eye on everything. I knew where my stuff was. I knew where my assignments were. And just, so the fact that they were left behind, I do not know. It mm. must have been a really odd day. Right. That, that they wouldn't be kept behind. Right, right. You know, maybe a moment of, oh, I got to clear out my backpack and, oh, these are empties, yeah. you know, or, or something or like maybe that. Maybe didn't have them labeled or, right. because I took so many. Right. Also, it, that's probably a factor in it because my grandmother, I, you know, stayed with her, um, Till gosh, until I actually moved away, I you know I saw her every day, and so she was a constant in my life. And I was doing mostly candids, some, and then I started getting into some posed mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I did a lot of, uh, that I'll show you later of things that were just sort of like tests. You know, like what if we were at this space in this place at the barn, mm -hmm. up in the barn with mm -hmm. a cat, without a cat. You know, oh just, yeah, 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 oh, neat, neat, yeah. yeah. I look forward to seeing those. Um, and I'll tell you, I have some things for you to, to have too. Um, so, you know, I, ju I just keep thinking back to what if I had just popped them open? It's like, oops, oh, there was film in there. Oh, well, toss away, yeah. you know, reload. Yeah, I mean, it really just opened up a, a story that felt like, you know, it had come to a, almost a complete closure, but really not. 
and it just sort of opened up another chapter for me. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about it. I've, you know, finding things of, of, of my grandmother's that she gave to me and that, that are attaching to memories and um, have them on my fingers right now, some of the things. So it just, uh, it couldn't come out, it came at a better time. Um, of all things, it was a night before I was heading out on a, on a biggest trip for me. Mm -hmm. And by the time I made it there in that cold hotel room, you'd sent me the, right. Google, the Google Drive with the yeah. images on. And so that was a moment, you know, being away from, right. you know, being away from family, kind of sitting there alone and then seeing my grandmother's images reappear on that screen. It was awesome. Right. Yeah. And we should definitely retell that story about how, um, how we connected because it, it that's a remarkable story in itself um, completely i guess uh kathy is your cousin right? well you know on, in some way we 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 know that is to be true but a lot of people in this area have the same last name right ones. um so there's some overlap but we don't know how oh okay. even though we've both done the dna testing okay. and, and everything of that nature okay so there's lots of tale, tales about the different pods of Wiggins okay. clan in the in the area. Okay. Yeah, because I posted it and then she saw it. She immediately mm -hmm. recognized it as your grandmother. Recognized yeah. the, for the photos. I posted two, I believe. Yeah. And uh, she immediately knew who it was. And so I guess she messaged you? She actually caught, uh, she copied me in okay. her response. Okay. And ta or tagged me, I should say. And then I just, I'm like going to bed and do the, doing that last minute scroll th through and it's like you've been tagged and I'll look at it. And in a, for a moment, it just, it was like this sort of phantom-ish, like, wow, this looks really familiar. I shot up from bed and I ran upstairs and I pulled open this old suitcase that had a lot of photographs just to sort of like, sort of worry myself and then to respond to whoever this Joe Holt person <laughs> was that, hey, that's my, that is my grandmother. And that's when I... I think that I, with my phone, I took some photographs of some other photos I had, mm. and somehow either I, I, I think I may have like uh, instant messaged you or something, and it just kind of went from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, we had a, a very, very, uh, very unique conversation. I mean, it's one that you know not everybody can have. You know that, I mean, I don't know it's that connection. It's like, it's like something outworldly, you know, otherworldly. They just seem like. Fate, I don't know if that's the right word to use for it, but yeah, that was that was something else. And what blew me away is that I posted that and literally within an hour we had found each other. Yeah. You know, and before that I don't know if I told you, but I took those photographs um, to work to where I work. And of course I work with a lot of people who you went to school with. Mm -hmm. Um and they couldn't quite, they identified two of the students in the, in the photos. They knew who they were. But we, first of all, we had no idea that the one photo of you standing in front of, I guess, where you were staying in Savannah, mm -hmm. that that was actually you. We didn't know that was you and nobody recognized you. So there was all kinds of speculation of who the photographer could have been. Wow. Yeah. You know, and the one thing that we did know that was the photographers was that shot of the leg. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The shot, it's it's snow. Oh, yeah, snow. yeah, yeah. That was my artsy shot. Yeah, yeah. so it's the shot of a leg <laughs> in the snow. And it's like, can you identify this person from... The <laughs> Funny. From yeah, the I, I had inklings of wanting to get, you know, really sort of a little bit more avant-garde with stuff, you know, even at 16 and 17 years right. old, you know, you know, go stick your bare leg in snow <laughs> kind of thing. So... But yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, that, so that was that was everybody was trying to figure out who you know who that was, and there were a lot of speculations. Um, but anyway, to to then put it up on Facebook and get an answer within an hour was just amazing. Yeah, for me too. I mean, it's, so personally, it's, it's probably the most incredible and um, sort of lasting use of social media mm -hmm. that I that I personally am aware of. You know, you hear these things every once in a while, about finding someone, a lost relative, that sort of thing. Right. This has sort of been my most, you know, incredible tag a moment for sure. Thanks for watching. In part 3B, we're going to talk to Tony about his remarkable grandmother, so stay tuned.